We all need a bridge, someone or something to connect us, to illuminate the pathway before us when we feel lost, full of fear, confused by life, hurt by the world around us. Life can be messy, chaotic, stressors all around. It's easy to feel alone. Opportunities for fear, anxiety, pain, rejection, they exist at every turn. The world needs bridges, people, ambassadors, hope carriers, and freedom fighters. The world needs you, me, it needs us. Often we wonder, where is the bridge? Where is the hope? Who or what can help me? Can you? Are you the bridge? Am I? The answer is yes, it's us. We are the bridge. We are the ambassadors, the hope carriers, the freedom fighters. We are God's hands and feet on the earth, bridging the chasm of value and worth. We bridge that wide gap when we share of His grace, of His power to save us and His warm embrace. He sent us His Son, sent Him into the world. And because of you, because of your bridge building and your willingness to stretch wide your own arms and be the bridge that people so desperately need, hope can shine bright and freedom will win the fight. There is a light in the midst of all the darkness because Jesus is a bridge to you so that you can be a bridge to others. Your story is the bridge. Your story met by his story, dripping with the blood of a king who died for you to share of his grace to a world lost in space, searching and lonely and crying out for days. Your story is the bridge of his amazing grace. And if this seems too good to be true, close your eyes now and let the Father speak to you. Allow him to show you with arms open wide how he bridges that gap in your soul and your mind to be for the world what the world cannot be a connector, a pathway, a bridge. It's your testimony. From your story of healing to another's cry for hope, from your testimony of Jesus to the one strung out on dope, you are the bridge, the one they will see that will point them to Jesus, who will set them free. It's time, all you bridges, it's time to arise, to go after Jesus, to gaze in his eyes. It's time for the bridges to come alive. So the journey the Lord's really had me on is seeing Him as the bridge rather than me, but seeing that His arm is never too short to save. He can, he can always reach us, we're always within His grasp, that we can't ever get too far from His embrace to a place where He can't reach out and find us and find a way and make a way that there really isn't a place of hopelessness when he, br he brings that bridge into our life. Building a bridge is such a unique opportunity that we all have to build a safe place in a relationship. It's a seed. It's about building intimacy with someone. And it really starts with the most simple act of kindness. And so that can be as simple as you're walking through the grocery store and you, a piece of chocolate stands out to you and you think, I know who would like that. Or yeah. you're seeing 
um, essential oils or Epsom salts and you're thinking, I know who needs this. They need to be encouraged and they need to know that it's time to rest and it's time to replenish. And that gift, that act of kindness, it speaks identity into someone's life and you become a bridge. Yeah. You become Jesus to that person. And it reminds me of this verse in 1 Timothy 2, 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man, Jesus Christ. And that word mediator means a go-between. It's a bridge. So it's not us that lives, it's Christ who lives in us. And we get to be that bridge to the heart of the Father for mm -hmm. them. You know, it's so practical. One of the things I've been doing with one of my friends is creating identity care packages. Mm -hmm. And we've been looking up what their name means and looking up a scripture verse that goes with their name and creating a little gift for them that makes them feel loved. It makes them feel important. You know, maybe you know someone that's overwhelmed in your life and you can be that bridge. What, so what does he have you doing today that makes you a bridge for people? Yeah, I think it's become really internal mm -hmm. rather than external. So in the past, I can think of times when I've mentored or taught or reached out to people. But recently I find that he's really doing a work with inside of my heart, or it's like, how is my heart reaching out towards someone? Am I reaching out with a desire for justice, which is my personality, a desire for truth, which again is kind of, would be my typical way that I would reach forward, or am I gonna reach out with mercy? Am I gonna stretch out as far as I can go with compassion and with a desire to see blessing on that person instead of really see them get what they deserve? And that's what God does towards us. Like even as he was led to the cross by his enemies, he never stopped reaching out to save. He never stopped reaching out to show mercy and to show compassion to people. And I feel like internally he's, he's making my heart that bridge so that I'm starting to love people who normally I would really want exposed and want them to be judged for what they did. Wow. That's so personal, you know, so how, how does that happen in our heart? You know, like, how can, how can I get there? How can I see that in my own life? I think it's by the power of the Holy Spirit. Like, I think it's by, and that, it really is. It's not something that, that I could not, I can't do that by myself. I can't move myself from a position of pain and agony to a place of compassion, but He can. You know, and when we come before Him and we say, Jesus, this is me. This is, here I am, this is my heart. Can you, can you help me reach out with compassion and forgiveness rather than with bitterness and anger? Yeah. It's that ability to be transparent, right? Mm -hmm. About our own heart mm -hmm. and our thoughts and bring that before the Lord mm -hmm. and give it to Him and yeah. let Him then transform it. Yeah. Walking out a consistent life of transparency. Mm -hmm. Um, because there are many days, and I, like I said it today, I told him, I was like, I don't think I can fake this, you know? And that is not what God has called us to do. Yeah. And so I think so many people can get up every day and put on a face. Yeah. And you won't go to those deep places. You won't find yourself rescuing somebody out of the deep end if you don't allow yourself mm -hmm to be transparent enough to get yeah. to that place, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, um, and I've found every single time that we end up at a crossroads where we're God allow, like on, we feel honored to be able to use, be used by Him to minister to someone in a deep way, it's because we were transparent enough to begin with to open that door, yeah. you know? And so um, I think transparency and walking in step with the Spirit, like, is a huge piece of that like because yeah. oh i'm fine everything's great if i want to always have this like give off this you know vibe that everything is great and everything is put together and never go to those deep places i don't know that people would want to go there back yeah you know and so i think maybe that's a piece that god uses yeah. um when Otherwise, mm -hmm. he wouldn't, you know, that just, yeah. I know that for me has been a big place. There was a, a friend of mine that I, 
I got to minister to one time. God put her on my heart and we've been walking through just some hard things. And I called her one morning and just said, God had me on, like had you on my heart this morning. And I just wanted to pray for you and tell you that he loves you. And you know, she, she, that morning had planned to take her life, you know? And did I know that? Like, absolutely not. But she uh, later on, unfolds the story and we spent hours with her on the floor just mm. praying with her and being there with her in the deep end yeah you know yeah um but if you don't have an element of transparency and and just unconditional love mm. to be poured out to someone in that yeah. way that doesn't open that door to even have that type of conversation yeah, yeah. or relationship with yeah you know so mm -hmm. and it's using our testimony yeah our testimony is a big big part of that mm -hmm. the lord has really been using me as a bridge to survivors um and i've just really seen the value of um someone that's been through the same thing coming and, and being able to look them straight in the eyes and say i know what you're going through and i've come out and let me show you how uh, so it's really cool. We've been actually seeing um, quite a few women come out of sex trafficking in our area, um, uh, addiction, several of the things that I've been through in my life. And, and there's just nothing like getting together and, and just tearing down those walls by just kind of testifying and saying, listen, I've been there. This is what I've been through. And, um, and it's almost like there's this automatic trust that happens. There's this automatic bond and connection there because we've both experienced the same thing. And uh, so we've been able to even, you know, sometimes people that have been trafficked, they won't identify as a trafficking victim immediately because they don't even know the complex trauma and all that they've been dealing with. They don't even, they more so criminalize themselves than they do wow. realize that they're a victim. And so in those moments of just counseling and prayer and like going to the word and just being a friend and a sister to them, um, they're seeing for the first time uh, a lot of what they've suffered and been through is actually not their fault. And that healing journey, that forgiveness journey, that freedom journey really is able to start, you know, and it's, it's all through the Lord. But I've just found that um, again and again and again, it's, it's been about being a bridge to survivors and intentionally uh, like looking for those ones that are still in the dark, still oppressed, still being exploited, and not being afraid to go into those dark places, you know. Yeah, so you go into the dark places. Absolutely. Yeah. There's even times where, um, you know, law enforcement, they're like, if, if you don't have a victim that's ready to testify, there's nothing we can do. <laughs> so it's like, okay, like I, I can have evidence that someone's being exploited and trafficked, but if that victim won't talk and speak for themselves, yeah. um, then sometimes there's nothing that can be done. And so, but hey, I'm here and I'm going to be that yeah. bridge to wherever they are, if they're being exploited by their pimp or exploited online or whatever's going on. Um, and like, I'll go, you yeah. know, and, and help bridge them out of that place. And most, most victims of trafficking aren't gonna just testify against yeah. the monster right. that's abusing it's and exploiting scared. them. So yeah, um, just that bridge is so needed because there are several different gaps, you know, in, in that journey of from where they are in a brothel to, you know, thriving and, and being healed and finding success, you know, in, in community. Yeah, how do you feel like you're a bridge today for people? I really feel like being a bridge to survivors means being more than a conqueror. Yeah. And I just want to, I have to read this uh, scripture or just go back to this scripture in Romans uh, 8, 37. It says, yet in the midst of all these things, we triumph over them all for God has made us to be more than conquerors and his demonstrated love is our glorious victory over everything. And I feel like in order to be more than a conqueror, you don't only conquer your own stuff you know the stuff that that stuff that I've been through I didn't just conquer my stuff and then like live in a bubble and just be happy like oh yeah I made it through I've conquered but being more than a conqueror is like okay I've conquered my stuff and now I'm gonna help other people conquer theirs and I'm committed to the journey whatever that looks like because it is different for every individual you know how they get through freedom and healing and 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 learn their identity and who they are you yeah know? 
Yeah, and that's so personal. I mean, that's what the Holy Spirit does with us. Yeah. There's no cookie cutter way, right? right? And He personalizes our freedom for each one of us. Yeah. And it's so beautiful. Yeah. And then you get to go in and be a bridge for yeah. that individual, yeah. for the Holy Spirit to connect with them. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, okay, I think everyone can be a bridge in some way based on what they've been through, their story, because we're overcomers by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. And so whatever people have been through, if they, whether they, maybe they haven't been through sex trafficking, but maybe they've overcome, you know, anxiety or depression, or um, maybe swing it to the positive side, they have successfully launched a, a business or something like that yeah. and went through all of those steps and overcame every obstacle. Right. Whatever people have overcome, they can be a bridge to others that are still yeah. in that place that have not reached that, that, that level level of whether it's success or freedom or, um, you know, encountering the love of God or whatever it is yeah. and pull people to that place. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's such this rallying thing. Like, come on guys, you know, and it's preferring others. It's seeing others mm -hmm. even as better than yourself. Like yeah. the word tells us to do and to yeah. be able to identify what we've overcome, what we've walked through and then see that as an opportunity to invest and to pour into others yeah. is so powerful. Um, there's this one scripture that has jumped out at me and I, and I just think it's, it's crazy amazing. <laughs> I wanna share this, it's from Luke 11, uh, starting at 21. And Jesus is speaking and he says, Satan's belongings are undisturbed as he stands guard over his fortress kingdom, strong and fully armed with an arsenal of many weapons. But when one stronger then he comes to attack and overpower him. The stronger one will empty the arsenal in which he trusted. The conqueror will ransack his kingdom and distribute all the spoils of victory. Mm. <laughs> so good. So I feel like there are people that are maybe like ensnared or trapped or overwhelmed by yeah. the enemy. And the enemy thinks, oh, I've got this. Like yeah. they are my possession. I'm using weapons against them until <laughs> the, a stronger one, who is Jesus, yes. comes in. And how is Jesus gonna come in? But if it's not through us yeah. as a bridge to yes. go into those places or to, to reach out to those people that are, that are trapped, you know? And when we carry in Jesus, who is stronger, then I've seen so many times, all of the weapons, the lies, the attacks that the enemy has been bombarding a person's life with, they get stripped away. Yeah. And that person that maybe the enemy thought was his possession, gets taken out and gets led out into freedom. And it's, it's like only Jesus can do this. Yeah. Like only Jesus yes. can do this, you know? Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, and then we become the bridge for them to Christ, you know? Yes. It's like that scripture that in, I think it's second Corinthians, it says, and we with unveiled faces yes. reflect the glory of yeah. Jesus, you know? Yeah. And we get to reflect the glory of Jesus to people who, haven't encountered him or need that reminder that they get to be a bridge, like you're saying. Yeah. You know, it's interesting as I've thought about bridges and their purpose, you know, a bridge gets us, if we're on this side of the bank and we have to get there and there's no other way, we have to use the bridge. You know, we have to get from this point to another place in our life and there's no other way to get there but a bridge, you know. Bridges protect us. You know, sometimes there's raging water underneath, whatever's going on, and that bridge is going to get us safely to the other side, you know. And the interesting thing about bridges is we're not meant to live on them, you know. And we don't, we're meant to get from this place over here. And sometimes we can get real narrow minded about what we think would be, oh God, you, this situation or this truth might be a bridge for me to get here to, I'm not supposed to live on that bridge, but I'm supposed to get from here to here. And so I've realized in my own life, being called at a very young age to preach and teach the gospel, in my mind, I was like, it's behind a pulpit, it's always in a church setting, and that's what it looks like, you know? Yeah. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I have made you a bridge, a bridge in health and wellness, a bridge in the very thing that came to take your life. You know, wow. actually, I'd like you to lay your life down as a bridge for others in sharing this truth. And it's been wild. So we've developed a, a nonprofit called Girl of Hope. And what that does with all my years of loving and teaching and spreading the gospel and, 
and getting my master's in counseling and mental health therapy right in the midst of a hellacious divorce, I realized, oh, you were creating in me a bridge, you know, a bridge of truth for people. And then through my own healing, he gave me some tools that were my own bridges. And one of them is an unassuming uh, little mini trampoline. And out of that rebound exercise, all the science behind it, it rebound exercise, the cancer answer, never be sick again by jumping on a trampoline. All these things, the Holy Spirit's like, here's a bridge. Okay, here's a bridge, you know? And so, we, I don't think we ever need to limit God that we're created for the impossible in your workplace, in the marketplace, you know? There's treasures in darkness that He wants us to expose as people of the light. And so I thought, you've got to be joking me. You want me to create a company that is now called Jumpology that we jump on trampolines and we talk about physical health and wholeness along with healing our inner man that inner man of the soul and so we have girl of hope and we're partnering with jumpology and it's now an entire nonprofit. and that is how god has made me a bridge i believe the world needs jumpology anybody can jump on a trampoline from young to old and little did i know it was cleansing my lymphatic system when I go back and I have my routine PET scans, the oncologist just shakes his head. He's like, your lymph nodes are perfect. I, I can't even believe it that where that cancer came to attack, little did I know he was gonna use that as a bridge of healing. To so we should never, we should never question, you know, the places in our life that God says, hey, I'm about to, you can't, you're looking at it and you see a raging river and you don't even know I'm about to make you the bridge. I'm about to use you to help others cross over on dry land. It's, it's been incredible. Let's pray for people. Let's pray um, and intercede that they be awakened. Yeah, Father, we, um, we intercede. We stand in the gap right now as a bridge for people through the Spirit that, God, you would awaken the bridges in your saints today, that you would awaken them, you would awaken me and Sula um, to the divine opportunity that we have to stand in the gap for people, to be that bridge from what may, maybe the struggles they're going through to you, Christ Jesus, and that we point people to you, that we point people to freedom, and that we remind people that they too get to do the same thing for others. Activate us, Lord. Mm -hmm. And I just pray, God, that even as you commissioned every believer and disciple and follower to go to the nations, to, to spread the gospel, I just pray even now for those watching who are sensing a commissioning to go out and to do something. And I just say, Holy Spirit, come and anoint them to be the bridge that they are to be for you. And I thank you, Lord, that this is not just something that has to happen on major platforms or like, for someone with a microphone, you know, at a podium. But I pray that you would lead them and guide them to be able to be a bridge in everyday life, that this would be a lifestyle of bridging people to you, bridging people to freedom and healing. In Jesus' name. Yeah. This season on Creative for the Impossible, we are crossing bridges and heading out on a new kind of journey, one that abandons the boxes, the agendas, confronting and embarking upon the unknown. We're capturing stories of God's goodness in the everyday, the ordinary. It's a season of discovering the stories hidden in plain sight, stories of bridge builders, hope carriers, freedom fighters. This season, we abandon everything we thought we knew in order to uncover the truth we were always meant to find. Creative for the Impossible is a call to action, a call to confront the lies and the limits of what we consider possible, daring to step into the wild unknown, out of the boat, onto the waters where Christ awaits arms open wide. The only question is, are we willing to take the risk? Are we willing to cross that bridge in our own life from what we deem possible and step into what God says we can do? My friend, God thinks you can do anything. He knows it. He created you for it. He even empowers and equips you with the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, His spirit to seal the deal and unlock the truth. Faith, hope, love, each of these call us to a lifestyle of risk. God is scanning the earth, looking for vessels, willing to lay down their life and be a bridge. 
Revelation 12, 11 says, they triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. The father eagerly awaits the awakening of his sons and daughters. The moment we lay down our own life, our agendas, our plans, our own possible, and open our eyes to the God possible realm of the impossible all around us. There's an eternal conversation going on in heaven right now where the Father looks to the Son saying, who will go for us? Whom shall we send? Will it be you? Me? Oh, my friend, let the answer swell up from deep within. Allow your yes to roar from your soul as you partner with this call. Jesus paid it all so that you can rise up with wings like eagles, running the race, gazing at Jesus face to face. It's time for us to take a stand, time for us to cross that bridge with Jesus hand in hand, to see the fire in his eyes as he calls out our name. Will you go? Will you bridge? Will you risk it all for his fame? I declare and I decree that no longer will we be a people who are scared, frightened, or ashamed. I call out to all you bridges. It's time that we arise. Remember, it's the foolish things that confound the wise. So let us shed off all despondence, letting go of all our doubt. Let us answer the mandate before us. Risking everything on Jesus is what we're about. The Lord said to Jeremiah, do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them for I am with you and will rescue you. And then the Lord reached out his hand and he touched his mouth and he said, I have put the words in your mouth. We are a people with a purpose, a purpose to pursue, arms open wide to the one before us, unafraid, unashamed. It's what Jesus would do. He sees what we cannot see. He hears what we may miss. He knows what people really need in life, a bridge connecting them with heaven's kiss. These people, precious, beautiful, yet so lost and full of sin, Jesus looks at them with eyes of love. He sees a heart he longs to win. Friends, let's be the ambassadors we were always meant to be. Let's see this as our chance to finally allow the love of God to overtake our every glance. Let us scan where the Father scans and look where Jesus looks to find the hidden treasures, people, names written in heaven's books. Remember, we are the ones the world can see that will point them to Jesus who will set them free. Jesus is the one we do it all for. He paid the price that opened the door. He tore the veil. He paid it all. So now we rise up, created for the impossible.